All right, guys, welcome back. Um, time for a bit of inspiration. Finish the finish the rudder and the fin. Have a look at this. So, excuse my daughter's painting in the background. Back on the fuselage, large, just sitting there at the moment. But we got a um, got a rudder working well. Really happy with my radius at the top there. Nice lines, looking sexy. Um, that's where that's at at the moment. Okay, plans have been drawn up. Now I've just pulled out the horizontal stab, going through and identifying parts. Uh, a few frustrations there, I guess. Um, the leading edge, plans don't show it. It looks like it's joined together as a joiner piece. Um, that part's not identified, so I'm just assuming. And we'll get some nice radius. Then just identifying all the parts, all the joins, how things are going to be, folded up ribs again, where the gussets go, and give myself as much information as I can. Also, um, trace the bottom of the fuselage. The important bit is these tabs, where the tailplane will bolt onto the fuselage, which dictates where these cross members go. I'm going well. All right, so once the plans are done, I'll make up my blocks for the radius. Radius is neither here nor there. It says a four inch radius, like I said previously. So four inch radius, half inch tube. I think I got the math wrong last time, but anyway, this time's right. Half inch tube, so a three and a half inch radius. I think that gives me a four inch outside road radius, but anyway, you get what you get. Now I've got to make two elevators. This is the elevator trailing edge. So the, you can see the material just sort of slots in. Bonk. Then I'll roll that around and come around here. I'll put another block there when the time comes um, and then around the 12 incher and up to the spar just have to make sure you've got enough material obviously to wrap it around um, one thing to note you do as this wraps around you run out of leverage on the material so you'll get to about there Let's see I've only got about 12 inches which we all wish we had um, but to fold that around that's where we're at at the moment and I made one up for the leading edge. Leading edge is in two pieces which will come down and around. That's a four and a half inch radius over there. At this stage I'm just going to leave this straight and we'll see how we go. Alright, you see where I'm going with this? Just bent up the two leading edges, uh, locked it into a block on centre line, around the radius to the tip. It's got a little bit of pretension there. Good morning. More importantly, I've got those two exactly the same. So now I'll flip that over. And that'll line up this side. So they're symmetrical. Beautiful. I think that's all. Well, hopefully, probably got wingtips to do. And they're all they're 48 ribs. But as far as bending goes, I get nervous doing that. But you can see, I've got the tail plane and the elevator bent up. The important thing for me was basically get them, uh, get them the same, which I've managed to do. Um, you know, I know, I know you blokes are going to walk up to my aeroplane and check out my elevators and they might be slightly different, but hey, bend your own stuff. Um, no, just kidding. Get nervous bending that material because I haven't got stock on hand. Um, it's not as easy as you think doing the radius. I think I had, well, I had my two blocks down. But say you want a 90 degree radius, you need to go part, you need to go like 120 degrees and let it spring back so you can't have the second block in place. Yeah, you know, if it was a bit of string, you could just run it around the blocks and it'd be, it'd be perfect. But you've got to go so far. Um, I'll show you up here. So for this radius down here, I wanted to end up there. I went four inches past it, this black line. You can see I had one, two, three, or one, two, three, four bites at it to work out. And then the second one, just take it to that line and the spring back is much the same to get the right angles. It's actually 62. Sixty-two. 62.5 degrees. Um, in there. 
which looks pretty close. But you get what you get. So all good intentions. Still pretty close to the, well, really close to the line there. Um, this is a bit wide. Has a joiner at the front here. So I can just uh, nibble away at this, make sure they're on centre, and that'll bring the tips in however far I need to bring them in to make everything line up. Next up, we'll mark the um, mark the spars. All right, so just going through, and um, this is what takes a bit of time, but I spent, well, I got here at nine o'clock, it's now 9.30, all the hinges on my buffer wheel. These come sort of rough cut, um, you know, clean the burrs off, make them all, I call it a soapy feel, nice and soapy, smooth. Um, they're very rough cut when you get them and I can feel a burr on that one now actually and run a needle file through the hole and then I simply check that the um, clevis pin actually fits so if I have any alignment issues later on it's um, it's not the pin it's it's an alignment issue so there you go just a fan of jigs use a jig for everything so these are my 3D printed blocks just drill four holes on centre line and see this block just slides along, makes all the holes square. Alright, where we get up to? We're on the horizontal stabiliser. A lot of work there guys. It's basically, as you can see under the bench, it's just a materials kit. Bunch of pipe, not many recognisable parts. So, a lot of time, you can see here like top's finished. The bottom I've got to trim off. So every individual part, I've just put another bevel on that. Taken a leaf out of Don Watson's book out up in Queensland. G'day Donny. Um, never actually met, but I'll watch your videos. Just tin tapping, give me a nice radius. This bit will go down here. Now I'll be honest with you, I did have a slight, oops. You think it's pretty easy just to build basically what's a, a, a full rung ladder. But for some reason, I got ahead of myself and one of these tubes moved so I ended up with a bigger gusset um, just to utilize the holes that I had um, anyway it's not how you play the shots how you walk from the table as they say so fixed it all up got my ribs bent up the guys over at Gippsland Aero helped me with that because um, I find that really tough this stuff to bend so now just going through deburring you can see this one's a finished product with my bolt hole, that'll be for the uh, bracing wires and the deburr process, clean them all up, final rivet, paying attention to I've got to get the swarf out as best I can, get the swarf out of the tubes. And that's where we're at at the moment. Tail plane complete, rounded off the edges, got the hinges on, now starting on the elevator. Drill the spar, ribs ready to go on, that'll dictate my trailing edge distance, and that's where we're at at the moment. Alright guys, I'm not going to lie, um, been a little bit of a struggle I guess with the tail plane. Probably see here, we're onto the elevator now. The, I guess, because of the lack of plans and lack of direction, there's three or four different types of joints you can see here I've gone the bow goes straight through so that'll end up <clears throat> that'll end up a um, a joint similar to that where we crush it down and rivet um, yeah the plans basically give you the guidelines that everything's common but it doesn't say what to use where in each particular application I'll cut out these ribs today, um, just have to scallop out, so it'll be one inch at this end, half inch at the top. That'll give me my elevator, um, so if I, you can see there I can slide the elevator, the bow, up and down to make the, make the ribs tight and right. Um, now control horns, there's no mention of control horns whatsoever um, in the instructions for a sop with camel. I'm just going off pitches. I believe these rods go in with the control horn mounted on. Now, my fuselage isn't here. It's still down at Rotec. 
I'm gonna run a bricky string from here basically to the bell crank in the fuselage, which will determine where uh, this actually sits. So, um, yeah, and then we'll join that up. Uh, I went with a half inch hole in the back of the spar. Didn't want to drill too many holes in the spar. Just found that the best way to go to hold, that'll hold that on centre while I gusset it. Making up all the gussets on the, on the tile plane here. Like I said at the start, you know, I think Robert Basley knocks this out in two hours. Well, I think I'm 60 hours in. I've got the fin done, fins on the wall. Um, fin and rudder. Tail plane's basically done. What I'm waiting on now, you need to think ahead so many steps. So that's the bottom of the, the fuselage that I traced. Then that'll determine where these cross members go to pick up the four mounting tabs. And then the, um, there's a horizontal part that goes across. That needs to pick up my particular mounting point for this bolt here on the rudder. So there's a lot of um, what ifs. Also the distance at the trailing edge with a hinge and a spar, then the rudder post. But the elevator needs to move, so you need a position. I know this, is a, this template is against my rudder post, so I need a, once the elevator is finished, uh, that'll determine another position. So for now guys, we might leave that video there, it's probably dragging on a bit. I really thought I'd have the tail plane and the elevator sort of smacked out. But as you can imagine, I've got her now, I'll show you here. I need a gusset, so two gussets there, two gussets there, two gussets there, two gussets there, coat the ends of these, um, they'll rivet on, and another gusset, two gussets down the bottom here, which I have, to, I have to manufacture all these gussets. All you get in the kit is, we get the two bell cranks, which is great. Um, that's the only way I know that there's a bell crank either side of the elevator, and these six inch um, circles which I'll cut into gussets. A lot of manufacturing um, and a lot of repetitive work. So you probably saw, you know, I'll cut the gusset, center line, Clico it, do the other side, bevel it, remove it, deburr it, um, clean everything up, get the swarf out, then final rivet. Still enjoying it. It's not gonna beat me. Um, just want it tight and right at the end, so it should work out well. Just the instructions are letting themselves down a bit. I jump online, there's plenty of photos and that online. I've still got my photo balls at my, at my feet here. Um, you jump online, um, you see how someone else has done it and you think, oh, I've done it wrong. You, for instance, where the... Um, I've got my tang, if you like, for the wires. Um, coming up through here I saw some other guys with through the spa and all of a sudden you think oh no I've mucked up but there's no sort of right or wrong way I guess so anyway it's basically a scratch build um, you can see underneath the table there just a bunch of pipe manufacture every part um, a lot of work but we'll get there thanks for watching